Hello everybody, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to make a rain effect. Now I'm doing this one off the cuff, so bear with me. First thing you're gonna need to do is start a new file. Now um, we are going to need a rain object, so insert an active object. We do not want this object to be created at start, so uncheck create at start. This is going to be our raindrop. So name it raindrop. <clears throat> so okay, we just need to make this look like rain. Um, I'm not gonna go crazy with the art. Come on. I'm trying to delete this picture, but it's kind of being a pain in the butt. Please go away, there we go. Uh, we're just gonna make it, I don't know, a blue square, a blue circle, or a drop. Look, there we go. Uh, you probably want your rain to go diagonally because most rain goes sideways, kind of down and sideways, but we're gonna start simple and just do some basic rain real quick going down. So here's our rain drop. Let's crop the picture, make sure that the uh, hot spot and, and our uh, action point are centered. Okay, there we go, there's a big fatty rain drop. <clears throat> we're also gonna need a backdrop, so go ahead and add a backdrop object. Oops, that's physics engine, what am I doing? Insert backdrop all right take this backdrop we're gonna just this is gonna be the ground so I'm gonna make it just a green slice of ground so I'm gonna drag this over here so it covers the entire frame <clears throat> okay so there are a bunch of ways to do this so we're gonna start simple so um, oh also you need to make sure that your uh, backdrop is set to be an obstacle so first thing we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make the rain come be randomly uh, generated at the top and it's gonna come down and then be destroyed when it hits the ground. That's how we're gonna do that. So we're just gonna try always and we're going to uh, create, always create a rain drop object and we just need to set it somewhere up here. <clears throat> and then after we create it, we just need to set the position the x coordinate to a random uh, and whatever the width of our frame is because we just want to create it randomly at the top of our frame so I think it's uh, 460 by or 640 I think it's 640 let's try 640 let me look at my frame uh, yeah 640 so now that's going to randomly create a uh, raindrop at the top it's not my door that bugs me all right so raindrop will be randomly create at the top we need to make sure the raindrop comes down and can be destroyed when it hits the backdrop. So we're going to put that into a behavior. So add a new behavior to your raindrop. And we're gonna say, always. And we're going to set the Y position to the current Y position. Plus some number, whatever speed you want the, the rain to fall at. So we'll say five. <clears throat> And now we're also going to say if the rain collides with a backdrop, we are going to destroy it. Let's see if this works. All right, there is some very ugly rain. So this is a very basic rain effect. We can make this better in a few ways. Uh, one, we can add an effect for whenever the rain collides with the backdrop and is destroyed, so it splashes. So let's do that. Let's add another object. Another active object. We're going to name this object Splash. Let's go ahead and alter the animation for Splash. We just need one animation, and this is going to be the raindrop splatting onto the ground. So um, this is probably not even the same color blue, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just I'm not trying to get fancy here. So that's it splashing, and then there's some drops flying up. <clears throat> and what goes up must come back down, so the arc is going to kind of slow here. That's going to come down, that's over here. Okay, now we're coming back down. Uh, this is just a very basic animation. It's probably going to be really ugly. We probably need to lower the speed from 50 to about 30. Okay, 30. <clears throat> Alright, so 
Now, wait, hotspot, sorry, the hotspot needs to be at the bottom here. There's a way to change the hotspot so it does it for all of them. I think it's alt. Come on, set the hotspot. Okay, yeah, if you hold an alt and click uh, on this quick move, you can set all the hotspots. We're also going to do the same for the action point. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our behavior, and where the rain collided, we're going to also create, at that point, we're going to create the splash object, and we're going to create that splash object at the raindrop. And now we need to go into our, our splash object, add a behavior, and we're going to say whenever the animation stopped has finished, we're going to destroy the splash. Uh, let me see if I'm actually destroying my raindrop. I think I did that. Yeah. Let's make sure it's in the right order. We need to create it first before we destroy it, obviously. Let's see what happens. Okay. Still doesn't look that good, but um, we're going to make it better. Let me think about this. How can I make this better? Okay, we're going to add some variables to let you control the X speed and the Y speed, <clears throat> so we can give this thing a slant. So, uh, right now we are always setting... Yeah, right now we just have a static um, movement speed. So we're going to add some variables. We're going to add a X speed and a Y speed variable. Y speed. <clears throat> Let's make the Y speed, um, and you can just change it here. So, Or you could uh, change it through code in the game once the game is running. We're going to say, I don't know, like... 10 for the Y speed. We'll make the X speed 1. Uh, now we need to implement this, so we'll go back to our behavior, and we're going to say always position, set the X coordinate to the current X coordinate plus, plus the value of X speed. And we're going to set the position of the Y coordinate to the current position of the Y coordinate plus Y speed. Let's give that a shot. Okay, now <clears throat> these raindrops are kind of uh, they're very flat looking as you can see because I mean, they, they are all falling at the same rate. There's also not that many of them. Um, one thing we should probably do right now is we need to do cleanup because some of these raindrops are going to be created and they're going to, if, if they're falling diagonally, they're going to fall off the screen and they'll just keep dropping forever. Um, actually, they will eventually clean up because there is something here under this object. Where is it? Objects have this checkbox that'll let you here you go. Destroy object if too far from frame. So that is that is on, but we want to we want to make sure that it gets destroyed as soon as it leaves the frame. So essentially before it, when it's below the frame. So let's go ahead and modify this. And you won't notice anything visually, but it'll if you watch the counter rise inside of the debugger, you'll see that we are limiting how many of these are. So <clears throat> let us find out if the position, if the y coordinate is greater than the Y coordinate of the bottom visible edge of the frame. And then we're going to destroy it. And so that'll limit the objects. You can see it's kind of it's kind of finding its sweet spot around 60 right now. Um, <clears throat> I think we can actually uh, create more of these raindrops by going in here. I'm not entirely sure. Um, if we have another command here, this always, I think if we create another one, it'll now do it twice. Yeah, that's more raindrops. See, now we have 120 instead of 60. So, but let's go ahead and leave it just one of them. Um, all right, so I need to make this look better. So we need to do some stuff. This is gonna be a little more complicated. So if you're happy with your rain, leave it there. Uh, if you're not, if you want to sort of create a parallax effect, that's what I'm going to try to do right now. I'm going to need more variables to do that. We're going to need uh, an X position variable and a Y position variable. And we're going to have to change the way this works. So let's see how this happens. Create here. 
And set the expedition to random. Okay, that's all fine. After we create it now, we need to go ahead and set the alterable value of X position to the current X position and the Y position to the current Y position. Because we're going to move it and we're going to move it by setting it to the to a variable, internal variable, X position and Y position. So <clears throat> we need to set Y position to Y coordinate, coordinate. Okay, so we're setting X position to random. And then we are plugging in X pos and Y pos to X and Y. That's perfect. Um, we need another variable. We're going to call it scalar because I think scale is reserved. So we're going to call it scalar. We also need to set the scalar to a random value. We're going to say, I don't know, random 100. Now this might need some tweaking. Like I said, I'm doing this off the cuff. Random 100. Uh, and we need to modify this. Oh, God. Stop. Um, modify it. We're going to multiply it by 0 0.1. Okay. Let's mess with the code. Go back to your raindrop object and bring up the behavior. Okay, so we need to change this. We are always saying the x position to the internal variable x pos. Yep. And we are always setting the y position to the internal variable y pos. So go ahead and do that. Now we are always going to update these variables. Uh, we're always going to set y pos to y pos plus y speed. Uh, y speed. And uh, we're going to do the same thing for x pos. Oh wait, I messed it up. I said x pos. Okay, set y pos. Okay, set y pos to y pos plus y speed. Set x pos to x pos plus x speed. Uh, all right. Ah, sorry. But we need to modify that by scalar because what we're trying to do is we we are going to set a random. We are setting a random scale for these uh, these raindrops, and the bigger they are, that means that for perspectively they are closer to the screen, and so the closer they are to you, to the player to the observer, the faster they're going to move. So we're going to modify the speed that they move by the scalar. So put a parenthesis around this here and multiply this by our value, scalar. And do a close parenthesis. And also modify the x position one on it as well. So open parenthesis, multiply, and the value is going to be scalar. All right. And then we also need to always set the scale to the value of scalar. No promises this is going to work. Let's see. Cross your fingers. Whoa. Okay, it does work. Um, <laughs> but not quite how we want. So let's modify this. That looks bad. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the main frame. <clears throat> All right, we are always setting. Okay. Wait, what? Main frame. Always set x to random. Set x pos to that. Set y pos to that. No, this should that should not be there. Set scale to scalar we should have inside of the... Yeah, I put that in the wrong spot. All right, um, <clears throat> make sure you have the set the scale to scalar inside of the internal code for the behavior for the, the uh, raindrop. So always set the scale. Set scale to the value of scalar. All right. Back to the frame again. Uh, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to modify this. We're gonna instead of 0 0.1, we'll try 0 0.01. 
That should make it move a little less fast. Okay, that looks better. Um, we can also modify it by changing the... It's kind of mesmerizing. By changing the speeds of our variables. So right now it's all being modified. This, the the uh, Y speed is 10 and the X speed is 1. So let's say we want the ring to go very far left and right. We could have like uh, X speed of 3 and we want it to fall faster. So we're going to say a Y speed of 20. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, that's pretty decent looking rain. Uh, our, our rain objects are bottoming out here about 100. We can... We can just, and if you want more rain, if that's not enough rain for you, you can just copy and create another instance of this always event, and it'll it'll create more every time it loops. Like, that's a ton of rain. And the splash effect looks pretty good there at the bottom. So, there you go. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this rain effect is this is going to use a ton of objects. And so, something that you have to do sometimes is uh, you need to set how many objects. There's an object level in your in your application. So let me see if I can figure out where that's at. Because you might need to make it bigger. Unless that's no longer something that they have. I thought it was. Okay, let me see. Is it in the frame? Here it is, yeah. Under the frame events, or under the frame uh, options, under runtime options, there is something called number of objects. And right now it's at 1,000. That means the game is going to cap our objects at 1,000. So if you have a ton of raindrops, you got to keep that in mind. You know, if you got like 500 raindrops flying at all times, you're going to need to up your total objects. And you can you can add a bunch. You can have like 5,000, 9,999. I don't know. I don't know if there's a limit. Maybe it's just a processor. But uh, there you go. There is our our rain effect, um, and we could do all kinds of stuff with this. Honestly, we could we could set an angle. Um, we could, you know, rotate the drops at an angle and and uh, change the speed, uh, the angle based on like the x speed. You know, because we could set the x speed to a negative and it'll move it'll move left instead of right. But uh, there you go. Um, I hope you guys found this interesting and useful. Um, and as always, if, if you have any questions about this or any other uh, concepts you'd like me to try to teach you about, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. I have been playing Dark Souls 3, so I'm pretty busy. I guess busy is not the right word. I'm preoccupied. Uh, but yeah, here you guys go. I'm sorry I missed last week. So um, enjoy. You guys have a good one.